G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Mags TV's AMA for 50,000 subscribers. Now, first things first, I'm going to go through as many questions as I possibly can, depending on how long this video actually turns out to be. Uh, I may or may not put the details for the competition at the end of them. If I can't because the video is getting too long, I will make a separate video that will be uploaded immediately after this one with the details for the competition. Either way, they will both be up today. Anyways, let's get right into the questions. So question number one comes from, the name is in Cyrillic, but I've managed to translate it as much as I can to Comrade Angels. The question is, if you could own any prop era aircraft as a recreational vehicle, what would you own? There is actually a comment underneath it for the boomerang. Um, I would love a boomerang, but if I was to pick one aircraft, that wouldn't be the one that I picked. I'd pick something a little bit more practical than that. I'd actually go with a Catalina. I've always had the dream that when I retire, I want to travel a little bit. And one of my ideal ways of doing so would be to get a Catalina and convert the internals, take all the weapons, bomb bays, everything out of the inside of it, and actually convert it basically inside into a really nice pointed caravan. And then just fly from lake to lake around the countryside, or potentially even you know, plot a course across the Pacific and fly the Hawaiian Islands up to the United States and explore a bit of the world. I can't think of anything better than actually having sort of a mobile home with wings. Like, that is just a fantastic idea. From Bryce Sanderson, it may be a bit personal, but could you talk a bit about your life? What schools did you go to? When were you born? What did you, why did you, when, <laughs> pardon me, when did you look into doing YouTube and why? And have you done any other jobs? Uh, I know you have problems with your eyes and when did you start, uh, and what difficulty did these come with? Sorry, I stumbled over that one a little bit. That's a big question. Um, I'll talk about my eyes a little bit later. I know a few other people have asked, so I'll answer that in another question. I was born in 83. I spent the first half of my life in military schools. About a year after I was born, my father joined the RAAF. So the first half of my life was completely military based. Just before high school, he retired from the RAAF and came back to take over my family's farm because my grandfather, who owned the, a large dairy property at the time, was um, getting a bit old and was struggling a little bit. So he came back to help and take over as the oldest son. So the second half of my life, I was in rural high school which was a bit of a change from uh, city military schools to rural public high schools. That took quite a lot of getting used to. Um, when did I start looking into doing YouTube and why? Uh, that is a good question. I originally looked into YouTube after I left my last job. Sorry, my cat is on the table. Come here, Puskat. Um, originally after I left my last job as a result of the degradation in my eyes and I was basically unemployed and bored out of my brain playing a lot of War Thunder and watching a lot of YouTube and I was a little curious about what it was like to be a content creator on YouTube and what they actually had to go through so I decided to make some videos on War Thunder myself and just see what would happen and see what they actually had to do wasn't expecting it to turn into anything but um, as it turned it out, it did. The fire is on fire. Mags, will you have sex with me, please? Um, I'm going to go with no. Moving on. Lieutenant Falcon. Mags, besides Foster's, what is your favourite beer? All right, first things first. No self-respecting Australian would ever drink a Foster's. We sell that overseas. We do not drink it ourselves. It is just not done. As for what I do drink, I'm more of a spirit drinker than a beer drinker, but I don't mind a Carlton Draft, and Crown Lager is something else I enjoy every now and again out of the beers. From Ruby O'Neill, hey Mags, what's your opinion on how War Thunder is going and how the future of it seems? That is a pretty loaded question. Okay, so, how is it going? Um, War Thunder has its problems. Battle rating, uh, compression is definitely one, uh, balance, uh, flight model performance, weapons performance, a few network issues, which were stuff that didn't really exist in the start, but seems to be something that's loading the game up over time. Yeah, it, it has issues. And its issues are not necessarily unique to just it. It's something that appears in various forms in a whole host of games. How about its future? Um, I'm going to interpret that as, do you think War Thunder is going to die? Um, the answer is no. I don't think it will. I don't expect much to change. Gaijin seems pretty set in how their vision for War or what their vision for War Thunder is and how they want War Thunder to continue. And they seem to be pretty set on their rails and heading down their path. Most games of this kind usually have uh, an 8 to 10 year life cycle if they do well, and War Thunder has definitely succeeded enough at the start to be able to achieve that. I suspect the game will continue on at a path pretty close to what it is now, 
even with the addition of World War Mode, I don't think that's going to be a huge game changer, but it should provide some interesting gameplay options. But I expect the game to continue through up until the point that Gaijin chooses to no longer uh, support it. I don't think the game itself is just going to die overnight um, at all, but there will be a point that every developer, after a period of time, will cease to continue support for their title. It just happens. It's just what it is. And that's what will bring the end of War Thunder, of course. It will probably, from from the point that Gaijin ceases support, the game itself will probably exist for a couple of years, most games do, before they finally fold. But yeah, I, I expect what we see in War Thunder now to be the path that War Thunder will probably take into the future. From Monocle Crumpet, what is your opinion of the British Empire, and if you could be any other nationality, what would it be? Uh, the British Empire isn't really much of an empire these days, so that would be my opinion there. As for the British themselves, I think they're fantastic. I have no problems with the British end of the world at all. have quite a few friends over there and do want to visit. If I could be any other nationality, what would I be? Uh, British or German would probably be my two picks. From Illuminati is Real, do you think Europe is the Third Reich? Not since 1944. From Arono, how is your health? I follow you once in a while and you spoke about your eyes and health in general. I hope you're fine. Um, yeah, it's a personal question, but that's okay. Um, health-wise, I've put on a little bit around the midsection, which I need to deal with. I've uh, actually got a boxing bag and a set of weights up here that I'm starting to use to try and trim myself back up, because I'm not in the prime shape that I was in the past. Then again, I'm not a 20-year-old either anymore, so age is a bitch. It sucks. <laughs> so I'm going to have to start fighting it a little bit, I think. Uh, as for my eyes, um, this goes back to the question from before. Um, it, it's a the condition that I have is a high-stage keratoconus. It's a genetic condition. My particular variant of it, rather, is a genetic condition. Some people are environmental. Um, and it's a condition that degrades over time. So my vision is slowly worsening. It is worse now than it was 12 months ago, which is worse than it was 12 months before that, and it will continue to do so for some time. Thankfully, there is actually a point where the eyes will generally not get much worse, and I'm probably about a decade away from that. The problem is, by the time I hit that point, I'm not going to be able to see. Um, I expect within the next couple of years, I'm going to have to get some kind of surgery done. Thankfully, I did come across a potential surgery that I'm trying to find out about now that... Um, may be far less invasive than corneal replacement surgery, which is currently my only option. Um, but it is in the experimental stages, so I don't know what my chances are of being able to get it done. That said, if I can, um, ba basically my current condition to fix it, I need corneal replacement. So they need to slice off my entire cornea and replace it with a donor cornea. However, there is a experimental surgery that is going on at the moment where they cut a slice into the corner of your eye and they insert a what is effectively a small contact lens that fits in the inside of your pre-existing cornea and pushes it into the correct shape. Keratoconus is a condition where the cornea itself is deformed and warped. So the easiest way to describe it to people, if you want to get an idea of what my vision is like if I take my contact out, uh, find a cone of glass and then try and look at something through the bottom of the cone and see how everything distorts, that's my normal vision. Um, the contact lens that I wear pushes that eye back into shape, but it can only do so much. This technique puts a lens inside that will put, apply constant pressure over the entire surface of the cornea from the inside, using the pressure inside of your own eye as a way of keeping it in place, and pushes the lens into the correct shape. I don't know how well it'll apply to my current condition, but if it is possible to use that as a way of fixing my condition, the recovery time on that is measured in only a few months, where corneal replacement surgery has a 12-month per eye uh, recovery time, um, and I'll need to get both done, so it's two years. But it's... um. My eyes is glim in de in general. It's it's like it's not looking good, and yeah, I knew years ago that that's what I was going to face. I was told in no uncertain terms. The particular version of keratoconus I have is literally one in a million. There is about for every million people you see, there is one person who will have the condition at the severity that I have at the particular variant of the keratoconus that I have, and it is horrific. 
to put it bluntly. But all you can do is deal with it. That's all you can do. You can sit back and cry about it, or you can try and work out what you can do around the problem in order to make it work. And I've, as I said, I've done some of that with you guys already. Uh, being able to get markers on DCS was a major thing because that allows me to bypass a huge amount of visual problems and still be able to produce uh, videos on that particular that particular title, which I actually need to make more of, so I need to get on that. Anyways, moving on. Do you think you're going to... Oh, sorry, I should probably say the name too. Barry Fisher, do you think you're going to expand more on games in the future and what sorts of games would you like to include on your channel in the future? Yes, I do want to expand. I want to... I eventually want not some. I want more, uh, Mags TV to be not so much of a general games channel. It's going to still have its aviation component and so on, but I want to expand out into a broader area. I like wargaming type stuff. I like space. These are my two of my key areas of enjoyment. Two uh, most of the games that I like are based in either space or based around a wartime in some description. So I do want to continue expanding on the aviation. If any new sims come out, I want to obviously throw them into the military side of things. But I would also like to pick up some games, some non-simulation orientated stuff for that side. I'm actually hoping the new Ace Combat game, Ace Combat 7, has just been announced. Apparently it's going to be on PC. If that comes out, that's going to be a let's play. Um, just because I sort of I like games as well. Not everything has to be a sim to be enjoyable. And the space side of things, I definitely want to expand more. I also like I like indie games, so I want to put some indie games on the channel and help support some of those. Uh, Star Citizen was a big thing that I want to add. I can't wait till it's finished so I can actually do more content on that. Um, Alien Isolation. I, it's not so much of a genre thing. I'm not really looking at you know first-person shooters, flight sims, strategy. More of what the games themselves are based around. A perfect example is at some point one of the strategy games that I want to add to the channel is Homeworld. It is a fantastic title, a few years old now, recently got a remake. The best single space strategy game ever created. I do want to get that up on the channel. It's just fantastic. So I'm not limiting myself to genres, but it's sort of looking at either stuff that is war related or stuff that is space related is sort of what the focus of the channel is going to be. And I do want to broaden that a bit over time without obviously taking away the content that many of you came to watch in the first place. From Sky Trojan, what was the first game you played and what brought you into gaming? Oh, I actually don't remember the first game that I played. I started gaming when I was very, very, very young. I know my first console was an Atari 1600, I believe it was. It was about the size of a PS4. It had four controller plugs in the front of it where you'd plug in your your controllers, a uh, big 70s style hi-fi switches, cartridge slot in the center, and was finished off with a wood grain finish, so that shows you its age. The first serious gaming I did, however, was the Amiga 500. That was really my starting point. Uh, the Commodore Amiga 500 was a much older desktop PC from the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, it was in competition with IBM at the time. And I had a massive games library, well over 800 games in total. Uh, fondest memories was FA-18 Interceptor, um, one called F-19 Stealth Fighter, and of course the Amiga 500 remake of the original Elite and uh, Elite Frontier. However, probably the game that I remember the most fondly is a little game called Wings, made by Cinemaware. It was... A World War I arcade flight game with a storyline that uh, talked you through the well, the story of a squadron operating out of Verdun. It was a fantastic little game. You can still actually buy it today. I've got it on my tablet. Um, it's still available. That's, yeah, I'd probably call that my real intro to gaming, despite having uh, gamed earlier. Will Graves, what is your favourite tank in plane? Oh, in real life, favourite plane? Spitfire. Early model Spitfires, Mark I and Mark II. Love Battle of Britain Spitfires, followed closely by a P-38. Um, early to mid-model P-38s. Absolutely love those aircraft. 109 would follow not far after that. Tanks, that is a little bit harder. You know, I want to say Tiger because, you know, everybody likes the Tiger, but if I was to pick something besides that, I would probably have to go with the Churchill. I just always had a soft spot for that tank. It is just a monstrously big vehicle. Uh, War Thunder, for the record, doesn't do it justice on how big a Churchill actually is. It is stunning when you actually see one in person. They're huge and entirely designed for a kind of combat that never actually occurred in World War II, yet turned out to be reasonably effective anyway. 
Uh, combat Kiwi, how is my eyesight going? I've sort of already covered that combat, so I will move on. Sandran and Banefire, will you sing Men at Work, Land It Down Under? Um, it is best if I don't sing. I have an example of me singing already on the channel. It is, I can't hold a note to save myself. It would be far better to simply take the song and put it over a video, which I may actually do at some point. From Warp Speed, why don't you ever play World of Tanks? Um, I used to. I had World of Tanks installed on up until uh, most recently having the hard drive failure in the computer. It was on that hard drive and got lost. I don't really put it on the channel much, mainly because the first time I put World of Tanks on, the community of World of Tanks and War Thunder was having a massive dick-waving competition on who was the best, and I got a lot of backlash for the fact that I dared play a game that was not War Thunder when I could have been playing War Thunder Tanks instead of World of Tanks. Why would I play that horrible game? Um, I'm probably going to put some World of Tanks content on the channel in the future I'm as I slowly get back into it and relearn how to play. It used to be reasonably good. It was in Clan Wars. I was a spectacular arty driver. Yes, hate me all you want. I used to play a lot of artillery, and I was very good at it. Never once killed myself. Never. If you fought me as an artillery on the map and you managed to wipe out my entire team, when you come looking for me, I was going to be waiting for you in tank destroyer mode. I, I never killed myself. You would get my kill, but I would try and take you down in the process. From Telsion, War uh, Total War Warhammer will make a return soon on the channel and the Bretonia campaign preferred. I do want to play the Bretonia campaign. I find the chivalry system to be incredibly interesting and potentially infuriating too. I actually know somebody who's playing it at the moment who managed to deadlock themselves in the game by becoming friends with everybody and starting a war with anyone will actually destroy their chivalry rating, putting a huge amount of potential debuffs on them in combat. Um, I find the entire concept interesting, but again, it comes down to, at the moment, I have a X number of games already running on the channel, and there's only so many that I can fit up without having to cut content on others. So there's a few series that I would like to complete. Total War Warhammer will be one is on, on the shortlist for games that will be coming back. I do want to put a full campaign playthrough, and I am probably going to play as Bretonia when they do come back. From Rob Stephenson, have you ever taken part or been interested in the arts, i.e. theatre and music, and do you think that gameplay crossed with art could be an interesting style of video? Um, in theatre, no. I was never really a theatre kid at school, but music I did do. I used to play the drums and used to play the saxophone. Couldn't play either to save myself now. It has been well over a decade since I've touched either instrument. But um, yeah, used to play both. Used to do music. Uh, do you think gameplay crossed with arts could be an interesting style of video? Yeah, of course. Um, cinematics are actually a perfect example of that. There is a choreography to how you actually edit the video itself that would fall under the theatre category, and everything must be done in terms of music. And the idea is to create a video that is both aesthetically pre pleasing, beautiful, as well as interesting to watch at the same time. Um, so yeah, definitely an interesting style. Um, cinematics would be my best example of that. George Davies, hey Mags, what got you interested in aviation in the first place? Growing up in the Air Force. My father was in the Air Force. Um, my fondest or most clear memories of the Air Force were actually... My first is of a very early Avalon Air Show, which is interesting since i just been to one, where I was, I was only about six at the time, and I had tarmac passes. I was basically allowed behind all the barricades that you weren't normally around. It's something that would never happen today, but at the time they actually allowed families of people who worked at the show to have access beyond what the public would have. So I was you know, eating lunch under a mirage. I think there is a photo of me somewhere eating a sandwich sitting in the exhaust of a Mirage 3 um, and used to walk around all the planes on the runway. My most clear memories were of my father's last posting, which was actually at the Point Cook RAAF base, which is now a museum, where he was actually one of the people that were primarily involved in restoring the RAAF's Mustang. I think he put the first engine in it, and um, he definitely did most of the avionics and most of the bodywork before he left. It was his last job before he retired from the Air Force. I have some photos of that around somewhere. I'll have to grab those and actually show you some photos of a, a Mustang being worked on in a restoration hangar. But yeah, I grew up around this. I grew up around these planes, and my interest was sort of natural from that point on. 
From Plague Gaming, what was the worst thing you did in school and what was your funniest story from school? Funniest story, um, the funniest story I can't talk about. Uh, second funniest story also falls under the worst thing. We had, I, I was at school late 90s, early 2000s in high school. Um, so the start of the information age, uh, the internet age, and most importantly, at a time in year 11 that was uh, most famous for the development of a little program called Napster. Now, for those of you who don't know what it is, uh, Napster was a music sharing torrent program. It was the first of its kind. Um, made big headlines in the time, caused all sorts of dramas. And at the school that I went to, we had a very young IT teacher who also managed the networks at the school. And he was also a total prick. He was the most sexist, misogynist, racist arsehole you ever encountered. He hated the students, um, would sleaze on to the older female students, or as just a general cunt, the kind of person you really don't want to spend any time around. And I really didn't like him that much. So I spent the start of my year 11 up until probably halfway through the year um, basically screwing over his network and giving him an endless supply of things to fix, just constantly just jumping into the network because he also wasn't very good at his job. I could get into his network better than he could and just fuck with the settings all day long generally breaking it. So he just never had a break. There was no lunchtime break for him. He was sitting in that computer constantly. If he was going to be like that, I was going to make sure he had very little interaction with everybody. And then I discovered Napster. I'm not going to claim usage of Napster at all. You know, I'm going to put a spoiler up here for it. But I may have put Napster on every single computer in the entire school and removed the security permissions that prevented Napster from operating on all of the computers and then just let shit happen. I'm not gonna say that I used it, but I, let's just say he didn't have a very good year. Yeah, I was a bastard when I was in high school. Cole Simmons, do you even lift, bro? Yeah, I do, bro. Lance and Nick Gaming, I do have one question to ask. Would it be possible to play Aces High 3? I actually did play Aces High 3 during the early part of its develop, uh, development. Did like what I saw, got to play around with a little bit with its VR. It was a it was a very interesting game. The problem is it's subscription-based, and I've got that much money going to that many different places at the moment, I can't afford another subscription, otherwise I would play it. And, well, actually, since I'm on a new computer at the moment that's been fixed up, I could probably play the beta one more time, or the, um, the free period of two weeks or one more time, but you probably only get one or two videos out of it and then drop out. But yeah, the game itself I quite liked. I never played around with any of the tanks or anything else. I mainly just flew the aircraft, and I thought it was fine. Um, yeah, if it wasn't subscription-based, I'd definitely pay more of it. If it was a game that I could just buy, and that's it, or if it, a game, if it was a game that was free to play, um, yeah, no problems. I would be able to play it all the time. But as a subscription... No, I don't I, I don't have the money at the moment to be able to reliably handle another subscription. From Ivan, what languages do you speak and what languages do you like to learn? I speak English and bad English at the moment. That's it, um, as with most Australians. As for languages that I would like to learn, uh, German, definitely German, and Japanese. I think Japanese. Um, it, it would be a toss-up between Japanese and Chinese, but I think I would like to learn Japanese. And with Japanese, I would definitely want to learn how to write it correctly as well. That's I love the way that Japanese is written. I find it absolutely beautiful, so that is one thing that I'd definitely like to pick up. How about creating a community clan for World of Warships or World of Tanks? At the moment, I don't have enough time on both to be able to play. Um... But, you know, it's a possibility. My biggest issue with doing stuff like that is because the clients are localized. So there is an EU client, there is a Russian client, there is an, a Southeast Asian client, there is an American client, and none of these clients interact with one another. That wherever I create the community, other members of my community are not going to be able to play there because their accounts are signed elsewhere. It's actually This is actually my biggest annoyance with World of Tanks, World of Warships, Wargaming products in general. Why the hell do they still have localized clients? It should be... Gaijin got this right on day one. Select a server that you want to play on. One client, all servers. Very simple. Anybody can play with anybody, and if you want to play on a higher ping, which my World of Warships account is on the EU server, not on the Southeast Asia server, I choose to play there, I should be able to just select that server and play, but if I want to jump back to C server, I should be able to do that as well. 
yeah, if if Wargaming ever fixed that issue, yeah, I would definitely create, uh, definitely be playing a lot more of starters, and I would definitely be creating community for it. But yeah, that's probably the biggest restriction on that at the moment. Not everybody would be able to join, only those that are in the area that I happen to be playing on. Torovish Gamer, what vehicles do you think would be a great addition to War Thunder from the weird and wacky to the insanely beautiful vehicles? Um, you actually mentioned one of them at the end of the video. The CSC Kangaroo, I think, would make an excellent Tier 4 Premium, and it did fly. Uh, that seems to be the restriction for most of Gaijin's stuff at the moment. Did it actually fly? The CAC Sabre is an interesting one. The CAC Sabre is one of the most powerful variants of the Sabre ever created, and it would have to go into the British tree, which would put one of the most powerful variants of the Sabre ever created on the nation where it would fly alongside the Hawker Hunter, which is the single most powerful vehicle in the game. Yeah, I'm not so sure if that's a good idea. I'd definitely like to see it, of course. You know, it's, it's the Australian Sabre, but... Um, would it be a good idea in terms of balance? That I'm not entirely sure about. Flathman, what is your favourite Swedish fighter plane? The Vigan. There's no question. The Vigan. It's as simple as that. Um, if you could meet any World War II ace, who would it be? Honestly, I've actually done a video on the one person that I would love to meet. Uh, Tony Gaze was a Australian fighter pilot in World War II, flew Spitfires, was the first Australian to shoot down an ME-262 and the first Spitfire pilot to shoot down an ME-262. I think he would be fantastic to have a discussion with if that was a possibility. Ace Flyer 89294 Hey Mags, how would you feel about Gaijin adding the Douglas A4 Skyhawk to the US tree after the AD2 Sky Raider as a US Tier 5 naval attacker? Um, that would not be a fantastic idea. Um, for starters, it wouldn't be an attacker. It just wouldn't get flown as one. The Skyhawk's performance would rival the Saber, Saber in terms of its combat capability. Even though it's, only, it's got two 20mm machine guns and a decent amount of ammo, so it could do a huge amount of damage. But more than that, you would have to neuter its bomb loads in order to put it in. The Skyhawk's primary weapon systems were either guided missiles or nuclear ordnance. Its dumb bombs that it carried was actually only had a fairly small selection of dumb bombs and rockets that you could load in. That wasn't what the Skyhawk was built for. It was designed to fly at a time when guided missiles were becoming a thing, and high-speed delivery of small nuclear payloads was a requirement for attacking aircraft. Um, strip away that bomb load, as I said just a moment ago, the Skyhawk, if you look at its flight capabilities, would really put the pressure on the Sabres in terms of combat capability. The attacker would be one of the best fighters in the tree. Um, that being said, it's not supersonic. It's not afterburning. Like, it meets the requirements to being put in, but I suspect that's probably the reason why it hasn't been announced by Gaijin yet, as, yeah, the attack aircraft would be the most powerful fighter in the game. Uh, kick into the old school, old... Three, what is your take on the Jewish question? Oh, shit. Um, that's that's a loaded question. Um, actually, no. For me, it's not a loaded question. Actually, before we go into this, I should probably clarify what that is. Um, doing a quick Google search actually gives you the best example of what that is. The Jewish question is a name given to a wide-ranging debate in European society pertaining to the appropriate status and treatment of Jews in society. Okay, so that is what the Jewish question is, and that is what is being asked. As for my personal take on it, for me, it's crap. It's really not that loaded a question after all. I don't judge people on their religious beliefs. I don't judge people on their skin color. I don't judge people on their sex. I could give a flying fuck about any of that. I really could. I judge a person on their actions. If you're a cunt, you can fuck off. I have no time for you. If you're a good person, come over here. We'll have a beer. If your religion says you're not allowed to have a beer, that's fine. You drink whatever you want. I'll have the beer and we'll still have the conversation. I just don't care. I don't care about anyone's backgrounds. I care whether or not they are a person that is worth speaking to in the first place. And everything else is completely irrelevant in my eyes. I just don't give a shit. So, yeah, for me, the Jewish question makes, from, from a personal standpoint, I just, I, it makes no sense. I don't understand why it's a question in the first place. Okratat, do you ever use the fact you have 50,000 fans from across the world to try and win an argument with your wife? Uh, oh yeah, I bet my 50,000 friends would agree with me. Yeah, no. No, I don't do that. See, my, my wife is very smart and she's very cynical and she um, she would like to throw stuff like that straight back in my face. So if I, let's just say I did do that and go, oh, well I bet my 50,000 friends would agree with me and her immediate response would be, oh rare, where are they? Yeah, no, no, I don't do that. That would just blow up in my face spectacularly. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> She's very grounding. You have 50,000 subs. She doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care. True Gropnik. Mags, are you a tits man or an ass man? Why do I have to pick? Why can't I like both? I like fucking historical things. What vehicle would you like to see in War Thunder? Um, sort of covered that one before. I would love to see the kangaroo represented because that's really Australia's biggest play on building a high-performance prop fighter that is our own. So that would be one that I'd like to see. And considering what's floating around in the trees, I don't think that would be too unbalanced at this time. The biggest issue is actually getting good information on it because it only ever did one successful flight test and then had a failure. Of all things, it was like a $5 hydraulic component failed that prevented the landing gear from actually coming down, and they had to belly land it, and it destroyed the prototype. So yeah, a five to, a $5 component common to the P-51 Mustang brought down the entire prototype, which, you yeah, know, it's sad. Devon Tichy, um, what do we got here? Are you a big fan of large civilian aircraft too, such as the 777 or the A380 or any others? I love all aircraft. I love big aircraft. Um, I've The biggest I've ever been on is the 747. I'm one of those odd people that likes to fly coach. Specifically, I like the seats about two-thirds of the back, just behind the wing section. Um, preferably, if I can, a window seat is obviously ideal, but on takeoff, I actually like to be towards the center row. The reason why is in the back of all these aircraft, you get just a little bit behind the wing. There's actually a harmonics point where you can hear all of the engines of the aircraft simultaneously as you're going through takeoff. And I don't need to see out the window. You can just feel the power of the engines coming on. Yes, love large aircraft, love flying. I'm an absolute nightmare to anybody I fly with because I like to seat swap very depending on what's going on to be able to um to enjoy the uh the sound and the noise. Um yeah, I also yeah for gaming side of stuff or simulation side of stuff, um I have uh, Flight Simulator 10, X-Plane 10, probably going to be picking up X-Plane 11. I don't I put some X-Plane on the channel before um and it was well received, but I I should, probably should put more of it up. Um but yeah, I do like just simple aviation. It's just relaxing just to jump into a big plane and fly out on that side. And um, a bit challenging too. Trying to manually land a 747 is a nightmare. Anyways, moving on. Robert Wolf, are you a pilot or do you have flight hours under your belt? Just the way that you fly in War Thunder and the terminology you use seems very professional. Uh, am I a pilot? No. My visual issues prevent me from ever getting a pilot's license, but I do have flight hours under the belt. Nothing stops me from sitting in the co-pilot seat and taking the stick, and I do have a few hours put away. Not as many as I would like, but then again, no amount of hours would ever be as much as I would like. Um, I've probably got enough flight hours that I could take the base civil, uh, civil course for solo flying at this point. Um, but yeah, it's the eyes. The eyes prevent me from being able to get it. I'm hoping if that experimental surgery that I mentioned earlier on was to come to fruition and actually do something, that that may be something that I could potentially take on again. But I don't know what the restrictions on that would be or whether or not there would be any anything extra that I would have to do or whether or not they would just take the fixed eyes as being fixed and leave it as that. I'd have to look into it. Besides making videos and playing video games, do you have any other hobbies you enjoy in your free time? Um... I don't play an instrument anymore. I do make models every now and again, or at least I used to. I haven't touched them in ages, although I do definitely want to bring that back up. Honestly, outside of doing sort of what I do for the channel and my gaming side of things, I spend most of my time playing with the kids or, you know, watching movies or television with the wife. Uh, at the moment, it'd be sad, but we're actually going through and watching the current season of Grey's Anatomy. Her pick, but I don't actually mind the show. It's not that bad. Um, I'm watching The Expanse, obviously. I absolutely love that show. Um, and just sitting back watching movies, just just like nice casual stuff, just chill on the uh, chill on the couch with the family, um, watch the How to Train Your Dragon TV series with the kids, you know whatever else. That's that's what I like to do for the most part outside of this. It's a side effect of my job and my hobby sort of being wound into the same thing in terms of the YouTube channel. That my off time is just general relaxation time. Twelve to twelve TM. How did you get the name Mags? As I said, I have an interest in history. Um, now, my family has actually traced back our lineage quite some way. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, as far as we've never managed to trace back our family was to being landholders about 900 years ago on the English-Scottish border. Um, 
we know we were from that area. We know we came out. The one single ancestor that we have managed to identify went by the name of Malguin. Now, when I started World of Tanks, I was reading a lot into my family's personal history, and I had to choose a name for my account. I'd never played a free-to-play game like that before, and I ended up just going with Malguin. And this was fine, for the most part. But two things. First, the name Malguin sounds like some kind of elvish role player, which it obviously wasn't, and that was one point of shit. And two, once I got into Clan Wars, um, trying to call out Malguin artillery on X, bit of a mouthful. And it wound up in the process there, getting, just getting shortened to Mags, which is what I ended up changing it to. So it's actually an abbreviated version of the full name of a 900-year-old ancestor of mine who was... A bit of a fighter, and known for getting into a lot of trouble, and enjoying a good drink. So it seemed appropriate. The Airborne Potato. Given you live in Australia, do you have to deal with man-eating snakes and spiders we hear about in or near your home? Uh, Do you have pest-free neighbourhood? We do most certainly do not have a pest-free neighbourhood. This year's actually been pretty good. We only got one tiger snake in the backyard over the summer this year. We got it very early on. Um, Last year was very bad. We actually had six two tigers and four browns in the backyard. Browns aren't too much of an issue. Tigers, vastly more dangerous. Um, Managed to get five of them, missed one of the tigers, and I suspect what actually happened, the tiger we got this year, last year we didn't put any, we only had the fences, but, um, and the snakes can get in underneath and get through the backyard. This year we went and put snake netting around, which it's basically just a mesh that they don't like the feeling of. They come near it, it grabs their scales, they don't like it, so they just piss off and go somewhere else. And we caught him inside of the yard trying to leave the yard trapped in the netting. I suspect the tiger we missed last year actually made a house up the far end of my yard in a wood pile and where I keep a, a pile of wood for a, a little uh, fire pit that I have in the backyard. And I suspect it made a little nest underneath there and has actually slept the whole year and crawled out from underneath the wood pile and was looking to try and get out of the yard right at the start of summer. And he got caught in the netting and we got him on the way out. Besides that, we haven't had any other in the year, so the netting is obviously working. As for spiders, uh, yeah, we get the standard white tails and red backs inside of the house. We deal with those as is appropriate because, you know, kids have got to spray them down and get rid of them. Outside of the house, same deal, although I try not to bother them so much. In my area, we tend to get a lot of huntsmen's. And as much as they're big and those who are arachnophobic will hate the look of these things, they don't really bother humans. They eat bugs. And during the summer, we have a lot of bugs. We have flies and mosquitoes, and huntsmen love those things. So I like to leave the huntsmen alone in the trees, let them eat the local insect population and keep them away from me. I'm perfectly fine with them doing that. That said, they come into the house. My wife doesn't particularly like them. Um, They'll cop a newspaper. It's just what'll happen. Traction Productions, if you could have any premium vehicle, only one, what would it be? Well, the Boomerang, of course. I wouldn't lose the Boomerang to for any reason whatsoever. Pavel Pension, what did you study and what do you do for a living? Well, at the moment, I do YouTube for a living. What have I studied? Well, I'm doing an IT course now. Prior to doing IT, I actually did a lot of advertising and sales because obviously I was uh, in a suit and tie job, which required a few things to learn. So it was a lot of sales a lot of uh, advertising, and there was some design work in there as well that I had to go through, as well as business courses that were a requirement, just so you could learn to understand the businesses that we had to deal with in terms of advertising. Backy, what is your favourite movie and or TV series? Who is your favourite singer and or favourite band? Favourite band's easy, ACDC, hands down. That includes the singer and the band, nicely done. Stereotypical for an Australian, maybe, but it's ACDC, they're awesome. Favourite movie... Hmm. I am fond of The Martian for a more recent movie, but if I was to pick a series of movies, it'd have to be the Alien series. Although, Tora 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 would have to be up there as well. As for TV series, oh, that's, that is a hard one, because there are some fantastic series out there. Obviously, The Pacific would be on the list. I'm extremely fond of The Expanse that's playing at the moment. Uh, Game of Thrones, I do love Game of Thrones. Uh, Babylon 5, I don't mind some Star Trek, some of the old Star Trek series are fantastic. I'm more of a Deep Space Nine fan there. Firefly, I love Firefly. That would probably be another one on the list. That that series should have gone longer. It's a disappointment that it didn't. Um, Yeah, TV series is a really hard one to nail down. Uh, Stargate, I love the Stargate series. Um, Universe, 
I wish Universe had gone on a little bit longer. I think it was just starting to find its legs. But Atlantis and the original SG-1 series are fantastic across the board. I've got the box sets for them. I love watching them. Orange Fan, is Dead Meat famous? He likes to think he is. Zach Moman, do you think you'll ever play War Thunder Sim Battles ever? Why or why not? Well, I have in the past, and I do occasionally play War Thunder Sim Battles. The reason why I don't really play them a lot these days is because they're no longer a battle, they are now an event, and I regularly don't like the vehicle lineups, and I don't really like the spawning mechanics for the vehicles in War Thunder Sim either, which uh, doesn't help matters. Um... Specifically talking about enduring conflict there, because that's probably the, uh, the my preferred mode of all. Uh, what do I think of them? I play IL-2 and DCS. War Thunder Sim is fine as a game mode, but as a sim, it's... To, to use the DCS term, it's Airquake. It's not a sim. It's, it's a dogfighting game room. There's nothing simulated about War Thunder Sim, and that's probably its biggest problem. Um, I generally, if I'm looking for simulation gameplay, I'm looking for a single or multiplayer environment with a very realistically modelled vehicle over a very realistically modelled battlefield. War Thunder just doesn't offer that, which sucks. But it's all right to jump into for a blat every now and again, or I just don't take it too seriously. Mozak 13. Would it be possible for you to start using manual control rather than mouse aim? It would be nice to see more YouTubers using this control mode. I'm assuming you're meeting joystick over mouse aim. I agree, it would be nice to see more YouTubers using it, but none of us will, including me. And there is a reason for that. War Thunder Realistic Battles and Arcade are designed around mouse aim. And mouse aim gives almost completely across the board advantages over joystick. The only area that joystick has over mouse is the ability to do fine maneuvers while flying. The thing is that the accuracy of mouse aim completely trumps that because the aircraft using mouse aim doesn't have to do a fine maneuver in order to follow you in combat. He can just swing the mouse to the point where he knows you're going to be in the maneuver and pull the trigger and you die. It puts you at a, dif a distinct disadvantage over anybody using mouse, which is why you don't see anybody with uh, flying who flies with joystick, you know, putting out extremely high competitive matches because it is not a competitive way of playing. The second thing to consider is YouTubers, by their very nature, are targeted more heavily. Even me, I regularly change my name to try and keep as incognito as I possibly can when I'm flying because having whole teams come at you really ruins videos um, and makes them relatively uneasy, uh, uninteresting to watch. But even changing your name, you still get identified. There are people who will work out five minutes after you've changed your name what your new name is, and they will be looking for you in matches. So you will get an unnaturally large amount of players focusing on you. Taking another disadvantage when you're already flying at a numbers disadvantage and being targeted in that manner, it, it would just be silly. There, there is no reason for it. That being said, if a game mode was to be produced, a realistic battle mode was to be produced where joystick was a joystick or VJoy was the only available control options and mouse aim was completely removed, I would completely shift over to that game mode instantly. It's actually part of the reason why I created the marked simulation event. It's a all the advantages of a realistic battle, but with mouse aim removed, and you fly with joystick or VJoy from inside of the cockpit. If that was to become a major game mode, that's all I would play. But until that is a major game mode, nobody in their right minds will play joystick in a mouse aim environment because you will just lose. A incredibly poor mouse aimer will beat an experienced pilot on joystick every single time. One Jack Torres, how do you balance your family life, professional life, and gaming life in such a way that you main time for a YouTube review channel of so many games? Uh, I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the easiest way to do that. Um, no, look, in truth, it's not quite so hard, although it's not easy as well. My professional life and my gaming life are pretty much the same thing these days. They're completely intertwined. Uh, my personal life, it can be hard. My professional life and gaming will chew into it regularly. Uh, helps to have a tolerant wife who will regularly slap you across the back of the head and say, Oi, stop being a dickhead, come watch TV. And just don't argue with it, and it keeps you in line. That and you know, I love spending time with my kids, so it doesn't take much for my kids to draw me away from what I'm doing. They've just sort of got to come in and say on the shoulder, tap me on the shoulder, and say, "Dad, I want you to come and do something, and I will go and do it." So, really, it's difficult, 
but not so difficult. Um, if I had to maintain this channel and maintain a real life job, uh, like a nine to five style job and maintain family life, I don't know how I would do it. I know people that are doing it and I have no idea how they managed to pull it off themselves. But thankfully it's the, the fact that my job and my gaming is pretty much the same thing and I can condense that into one area and have the other separate, that helps. What, what, warthog, favorite types of food, uh, Italian, Indian, so on. Well, you actually mentioned it. I love Indian. Indian, good Indian curry is fantastic. Sizzly chili chicken, wonderful. Uh, probably put some Italian in there as well. I like a good Italian dish. Good pasta is fantastic. And I like Chinese. Some of the more traditional dishes there are absolutely fantastic. And I like Japanese as well. I don't mind a little bit of sushi every now and again. Don't get to have it often. The missus doesn't like it all that much. And I also like uh, the salt and pepper squid is one of the dishes that you can get at a Japanese restaurant that's not far from ours. I don't know how traditional it is, but it is very nice. General Aaron, what's your view of Italians in World War II games? We all know the Germans and the Japanese get a fair deal of screen time, but are you excited about the possibilities of the Italian tech tree in War Thunder and World of Warships? Yes, uh, more vehicles that are represented, the better. Um, I would love to see more of these nations, a more, lot more of these smaller nations that were involved in the conflict and their unique vehicles rather than the same ones. Um, have no problem with them. Would love to see more of that. Um, looking forward to playing and unlocking and grinding out the Italian tech tree in War Thunder. The Kiwi, can you describe us the origins of your enthusiasm for war-related video games? What got you into the genre as a whole? It's the upbringing in the Air Force. That was where it got from. I had the aircraft bug at a very young age, and it just developed from there. Easy Mocha, what do you think of the War Thunder simulator flight models, particularly the way they model torque, roll, and gun ballistics? Um, yeah. War Thunder's flight models in general are great for a game, but I don't consider them simulation level flight models at all, which I sort of spoke about before. As for how, and yeah, the way they follow to a model torque would be included in that. Gun ballistics, well again, to put this whole line of questioning to bed in regards to War Thunder simulation and War Thunder flight models in general, I don't think of any part of War Thunder as being a sim. It's all a game. Even though one part of it's called a sim, it is nowhere near simulation standard. The gun ballistics for a game are perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, the damage models and the weapons damage, so the damage done by the guns themselves, that's a completely different discussion, but the actual ballistics, perfectly fine for a game. I don't have a problem with them. Patrick James, what's your favourite music album of all time? ACDC, Back in Black. Bazman87, my question, how old are you? Uh, old enough to know better, young enough to do it again. Meso A, how, why did you decide to start on YouTube? I sort of covered a bit of this earlier on, uh, boredom for the most part, and a little bit of curiosity about uh, exactly what it was like to create content and upload it to YouTube. And then, for some strange reason, a bunch of people started watching it, and it all sort of launched from there, and that's all it really was. I just had nothing else to do with my time and wanted to just see what it was like. Team Not Nice, if you could have done anything differently, why you have been as a YouTuber, a YouTube content creator, what would it be? Um, I would have diversified the channel a lot earlier. I think at the moment I feel pretty trapped with some of my aviation content, particularly War Thunder. Um, and I'm slowly pushing out of that, and it is slowly, it is stretching out and getting better, and I'm slowly bringing more stuff into the channel, and I'm fine, trying to find the stuff that you guys like. But I think that first 12 months of exclusively War Thunder content, while it definitely picked up a base player base, I was only doing three videos a week then. I think I should have been doing four and one video per week should have been something that wasn't War Thunder and established the channel as being a multi-game channel to begin with. And that's been the biggest issue um, that I've had so far is sort of stretching out of that you make this content mold. Well, I don't want to just make this content um, and yeah, I, th I think that was the first 12 months would have made the difference there. Dead Meat Gaming AU. So when are you going to do a Panzer Medals video? Fuck you, Dead Meat. Moving on. Sam Bevo, when will you do a face reveal? I already have. Um, I, I've got a couple of videos where I appear for a short period of time on channel. Uh, there's one video that has me flying because I forgot to turn the face cam off in the top right hand corner. Can't actually remember which one that is, but it is definitely out there. And there is a photo of me on my Facebook with my kids sitting on top of a leopard. Walter Bracken Canto, what kind of eye disease do you have? I have stage 4, stage 5 keratoconus, and I have the genetic variant, not the environmental version. 
which is worse because you can do stuff about environment genetics is a bitch hi taka one two three what's your opinion of the cane toad would you like me as a biologist to find a way of eradicating them from australia of course they're a pest they cause all sorts of issues with native wildlife while we're at it i would like to get rid of the carp out of the rivers australia's rivers used to be perfectly clear then somebody let a european carp in that digs in the mud and it destroyed the rivers in the space of about 10 years um yeah you get rid of both it would be fantastic would you give me a hug if I did? Damn right I would. If you were an explorer based on your taste in games, would you prefer to be an astronaut, astronaut adventurer, zooming in a land-based vehicle of your choice, a captain of a pioneer fleet, or a pilot viewing an exploration lot from above? Um, can I have a combination? I would love to be an astronaut in a ship capable of exploring space, uh, moving through the solar system. Interstellar, interstellar space, of course, would be fantastic as well, but, you know, small baby steps. You know, I, I would love to be able to look out a window and just look at Saturn from orbit. But that would be just, wow. Yeah, somewhere where I can go somewhere where I could see something that nobody has ever seen from that position at uh, before. That would be something that I would want to do. Anthony O'Neill, if you were in the military, what do you think you would be doing? I can actually answer that one. I applied. My eyes, unfortunately, were the reason why I couldn't get in, but I did want to join. Um, my actual primary I was going to go for pilot yeah be no big surprise there but my two applications for that were actually cargo I was looking for c-130 Hercules and I was looking at rotary wing uh, not necessarily attack helicopters uh, just uh, general aviation military transport uh, those were the two that I was looking for if I didn't get into that I was looking at avtech uh, so avionics technician mr. snaff do you own a pet kangaroo unfortunately no I would love one, however. 40 Second Shark, Team Edward or Team Jacob? Um, can I go with Team Helsing, please? Tamanu13, if you had to move out of Australia, where would you love to live? I've sort of answered this before. Uh, Britain or Germany would probably be my two ideals. Um, and the same with Supernova's question just below. If you could vacation anywhere, same deal. UK, um, Germany, Central Europe, that would be the areas that I'd want to visit first. Uh, US would follow closely after. I do definitely want to go to Japan and China at some point in the future too. You know, there's places where there's history. Charles Biddington, what would you say your favourite World War I aircraft is? <sighs> Fuck a triplane always comes to mind. I just love the look of that thing. It is obscene and fantastic at the same time. And I do have a soft spot for the Felix Stowe. That a World War II flying boat. It is such a gorgeous plane. It really is. Strekhanov Gaming. Will you ever return to the old star of War Thunder gameplay, i.e. post-commentary we describe your actions in battle? Um, I will do them every now and again. My biggest issue with doing those is I did those exclusively for two years. And after a while, it felt like I was just repeating myself. Because many of the maneuvers... Over the course of two years, it doesn't so much matter what plane you're flying, the maneuver sequences can be very similar. And I just felt like I was constantly saying the same thing over and over and over again, and it was bothering me, and I imagine that was probably starting to bother some other people as well. So what I've been doing is trying to vary it up from there. I will still do them every now and again when I'm not doing a review or so on and so forth. I will do a talk through the battle, especially if I get a battle where something particularly interesting happens, which is one of the things that I do look for in my recordings, to um, to actually talk you through how I got through a series of maneuvers. That would definitely be a thing. But um, yeah, that's why I sort of backed off on those and started picking up other things as well, simply because, yeah, I just felt like I was repeating myself. Did you ever were involved in racing of any kind, cars, motorcycle, uh, so on? Uh, actually, yes. When I was a bit younger, uh, just out of high school for a time, when I was uh, fairly early on before I got into more professional works, I actually used to race dirt track speedway with my father. We ran a little team together. Uh, this was basically uh, 600 horsepower, six-cylinder engines on a quarter-mile oval track at a 45-degree angle that is on dirt covered in water, so it's mud, sliding sideways in what is effectively a stripped out sedan with a roll cage and a bunch of metal screwed inside of it. It was great fun. Oh, did I mention the side of the racetrack wasn't a soft barricade? It's a nine foot solid concrete wall. Um, and you're doing about 110 sideways. It was 
good fun. Big crashes, a lot of bruises afterwards. Would love to do it again, but it was very expensive. That hit turtle, what was your first job and what age did you get it? Uh, as soon as I turned 16, got a job at the local supermarket. It was the easiest thing to get access to and start earning some money. And I worked that job all the way up until 18 and the completion of year 12. Toad, have you ever been deep inside Australia's nature and saw some typical angu- uh, animals like kangaroo or koala bear? Yeah, used to go camping all the time. Used to go camping several times a year. Uh, families always had boats, always has tents, has always gotten out into nature. Haven't gone so often so recently. The kids are a little bit too young too, and um, there are certain things that the what I have to do to manage my eyes that um, means I need uh, to take certain things along that can be a bit awkward to be able to be able to maintain them while I'm out in that sort of a situation. But I used to love going out and going camping just out in the bush, and yes, there would be kangaroos and koalas in the trees, and occasionally you'd have to deal with a snake, and you jump out in the boats and just go fishing, go fishing. From, for Murray Cod, jumping snags, it was great. I, I used to love getting out in nature, and I, I do want to go back out and start doing it again. Um, as soon as the kids are a little bit older, in fact, it's exactly what we'll be doing. Uh, Nate, what is your favourite military aircraft from Tank Full Time? Sort of cover that Spitfire and Churchill. I've already sort of gone over. Um, what else have we got? Screaming till the end. Question for the AMA. What is your biggest fear in life? This is one I actually look in the face of every single day. My biggest fear is that I won't find a way to correct my vision to the point where I'm able to see by the time that my children are going through the important moments of their lives. So my oldest daughter, I may not get to see her walk down the aisle, or I may not get to see my son standing at the end of the aisle. I may not get to look my grandchildren in the face and actually be able to see them. That's my biggest fear, and I sort of have to live with that fear every single day. Hopefully, something will pop up that allows me to correct that, but uh, it sort of seems obvious having spoken about the eyes, but that's my biggest fear, and it's, um, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, TT Gamer, where do you, where in Australia do you live? Um, I live in rural Victoria, not far from the New South Wales border. So uh, northern Victoria, um, surrounded by bushland in a small little town with a reasonable net connection. That's about as far as accurate as I'm going to go. Um, Yeah, not in the cities at all. And that pretty much brings us to the end. I've still got a show more button at the end of this, but it is just cycling and not showing any more questions. So I think that is everything. So, there, in between all of these questions, there was a series of comments. Uh, they weren't really asking anything, so I didn't address these here. Uh, a lot of congratulations for the 50k. Thank you to everybody who left me a message. At this point, this video is going to be almost an hour long, so or just over an hour. We'll see how it comes out once I've cleaned it up a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, at this point, I don't think I'll put the competition details directly on the end of this one. It's going to be too long to get through before you actually get to the details. So I'll just put the AMA up on its own, and then I will upload the competition details in the very next video, which will follow. It'll be small confined. I'll do a very basic video so it doesn't uh, take up a hell of a lot of space. And yeah, that should do it. Anyways, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your questions. I hope this uh, gave you a little bit of insight into who I am and what I do, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.